Hi, I'm Deb McIntyre from No Nets Now. I've made this video in order to help people learn how to effectively remove head lice from either their own head or their children's head or the kids they're looking after. It's really not rocket science. We simply have to remove the eggs and the lice from the head. So how did your child get head lice in the first place or yourself? Basically, you've come in contact with someone or something with head lice. Now, head lice only live on the human head. However, if a child was wearing a hat and took it off and there was a louse, the bug, sitting in the hat, and then another child put that hat on, that louse can now go from the hat to the new child. Only the female lice lay eggs, which are called nits. So when you have a female louse come on from somebody else's head onto your child's head or onto yourself, that female louse will begin to lay three to 10 eggs a day. Those eggs take seven to 10 days to incubate. Once they've incubated, they hatch, they're tiny, they're like a speck with legs. And then they take seven to 10 days to become an adult. At this time, you've got potentially dozens of adult lice mating and then the cycle is exponential from here on in. So when you first contract head lice, you might have an adult head lice come onto your head and it may be towards the end of its life cycle. So it may only lay three to 10 eggs and then the louse will die. It might come off in the shower, it might come off in a brush, it might die, fall to the floor. No longer is there a louse on your head. It is the louse that makes you itchy, it's the biting. So the eggs laid on the hair shaft aren't causing any itchiness. So once that louse has been removed from the head, we've now got the incubating eggs and at this point you won't be itchy. So when people say, I've had a good look and I can't see anything, this is the danger. Because actually by having a good look, the chances of you finding, let's say, 10 to 20 eggs and even one louse in millions of hair, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Especially, not every child itches. And potentially if you've got eggs in your hair, no louse, there's no cause to be itchy. So after you've had a good look, you haven't seen anything, then those eggs begin to hatch. Now there'll be mild itchiness with all those baby lice on your head, but you still won't see anything because the baby lice are like specks with legs, they're tiny. The likelihood of you finding something is very slim. So lice only live on the human head. They don't live anywhere else on the body. They don't live on your pets, on your animals. They're not breeding in your couches, in your beds, in your furniture. They only live on the human head. They're designed to walk through your hair. They've got a claw on each of their front legs, as you can see, and they're actually designed to walk through the human head. So when they come off your head, if they're left on a blank piece of paper or the floor, they're actually not going to go very far in that space of time. Generally, if one came off on your pillowcase while you were sleeping, when you woke up in the morning and when you go back to bed that night, you'll probably find it within a small section of your pillow. It'll still be there. It's not like a bed bug or a cockroach or any other creature that's running away and hiding and coming out. Actually, it's suicide for them to leave the head. Once they've left the head, they've got two to three days to find themselves back to a host before they're going to die. We don't need to worry about even the eggs leaving the head. They're always attached to a hair shaft. So they're super glued to that hair shaft. If that hair was to come away from the head, either in the brush or onto the floor, that egg, the likelihood of it being able to continue to incubate, it's the warmth of your head that is doing the incubation, is very slim. If you were unlucky enough to have that hair shaft leave just as that egg was hatching and that louse was coming out, it has to find a host very quickly. I guess like a, a newborn baby, it needs to feed instantly and be warm. So it's not going to be able to survive off the head very long at all. Basically, off the head, we're really looking for the live adult louse. They're not breeding, they're not covering your house, they're not all over your furniture, all over your clothes. 99% of the problem is actually on the head. However, it is important to be aware that if a louse came off onto your bed or into your brushes, that you need to remove those things so as not to spread the problem to other people in your family. When it comes to cleaning, you don't need to go crazy. You really need to spend the time doing the combing and getting the problem out of the head. However, it is important to do a few things. I think it is a good idea to change the bedding, especially in a child that's all over the bed and they're not staying stationary in one spot all night. If a louse was to come off and be on their sheets, when they go back that night, that louse is simply gonna find its way back to the host. 
If you've got another set of sheets, it's pretty simple. Just remove the sheets, throw those in the wash. You can just pop them on the line and pop them back in the cupboard. If the louse was clever enough to live through the wash, through the line, once it's in your cupboard, you're not going to be putting those sheets back onto your bed for another week. That louse will have died. Towels, hot dryer, 20 minutes. You can wash them again, the same sort of thing as the sheets. With your hairbrushes, remove all the hair, boil the kettle, pour some boiling water over the brush. Lice seem to have this supernatural thought around them that people think there's no way of killing them. I need a nuclear bomb. Anything that's going to kill an ant will kill an, a louse. They're insects. So if you're pouring boiling water over an ant, you know it's going to die. So pouring boiling water over your hairbrush, it's going to kill any lice, any eggs that are on there. If it's a very good hairbrush, you can always place that in the freezer for 24 hours. You can give things a vacuum. Again, if you place a, an ant on a hat and you were to vacuum the hat, the ant would come off. It's the same thing with the louse. It's not disappearing into nothing. So you're able to vacuum your couches, your car seats, the house, if your kids are doing cartwheels, give the place a vacuum. But honestly, the problem is really not everywhere, but it's important to do those things. So I want to talk now about some of the things that don't work, some of the myths that are out there. One of the most popular myths is that you can suffocate head lice by covering your hair with coconut oil or olive oil or even mayonnaise. Apart from that being an incredibly messy solution, it doesn't actually work. Because when you put the oil, the coconut oil, you would literally have to cover the entire louse, every louse and every egg, leaving zero air pockets. The lice actually have 13 breathing holes on their body, so you'd need to effectively be able to cover each of those. Each breathing hole holds about two hours worth of oxygen. So unless you're going to be keeping dousing your head, in fact, putting it into like a bucket of oil and keeping it there, it's really not effective. And when you wash it off, those eggs manage to live through that process anyway. Another myth that I hear all the time is that you can kill the head lice and the eggs with a hair straightener. Well, unfortunately, unless you're going to give your child or yourself third degree burns, you cannot get that hair straightener close enough to the root of the scalp where that egg has been laid. So generally with a hair straightener, you're about that far away from your scalp before it gets too hot. If it's too hot for your head, the lice are fine because they're, number one, the live lice are moving away from that heat, but you cannot get close enough to the eggs which are virtually on your scalp. I hear a lot of different ideas. People have talked also about using Listerine to get rid of the, um, the head lice. It's a very uncomfortable and ineffective way of doing it. People talk a lot about preventatives as well. So using things like tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil, lavender oil, all those things to keep that head lice away. I don't really believe those work. I've done thousands of clients and so many of them have used those so-called preventatives and still have head lice. Basically, I liken it a little bit like wearing Aerogard in the jungle. If your child is sitting next to a child with head lice at school, if their heads come in contact, they may be looking at a book together. If they're small, they may be sitting on mat time. Young children have zero personal space. So if your head comes in contact with another child's head that has head lice, whether you've got tea tree oil or any other concoction on there, a louse can simply walk across. And it's not just head to head contact, it's hair to hair contact. So when you have your hair out, there's a, the likelihood that you're looking at so this distance rather than it's slicked back, which is often why people will say boys don't get it often as girls if they've got short hair, because the distance for the lice to get from A to B is a lot less. When you tie your child's hair back, particularly for girls, it's a good idea to put it back in something like a tight braid or bun and even use some hairspray. Now the hairspray isn't like a preventative to stop the lice coming on. What it does stop is the flyaways. With all those wispy bits of hair flying about, the louse can actually use that sort of to abseil from one head to the other. So we've all heard about the superbugs in our hospitals that are now immune to antibiotics. Recent studies out of America have shown that the lice are also building up a resistance to these chemical products that have been used for years. Some people will say, well, why did they used to work? And I think many, many years ago, the products probably weren't as safe as they are now. We've got certain uh, tests in place that we can't use things that are toxic on our children's hair. But the products that we've got now, often they're fairly effective at killing the live adult lice, but they don't actually kill the eggs. So when using the chemical products, even if they were effective in removing the head lice, often they're so powerful, even the natural products, that they leave the scalp feeling really dry and itchy. 
So you may have actually effectively gotten rid of your head lice problem. You're left with maybe the dead eggs and the egg casing, but your self or the child is still scratching because it's removed all the oils. It's really irritated the scalp. So these things, when you're doing that, you're not actually sure whether you've gotten rid of the problem or not. And people continue to treat. I've heard of people getting so desperate to get rid of head lice that they actually used treatments for dogs and cats, tick treatments, things like Advantix or Frontline, something that are only recommended for the dog or the cat on their child. And the scary thing is that product is actually effective in killing head lice. However, the way that it works is it is absorbed through the bloodstream. When you're placing that product on a child, the blood that is pumped through their heart, through their organs, into their brain, has now got a toxic chemical in it. So when that louse actually bites and feeds on the blood, the reason that they're dying is because the blood is poisoned. This is dangerous, especially when there's a really easy way to get rid of it, which we're gonna show you how to do by simply combing. Using a really good comb and a really good technique, you can get rid of it in your own home very easily.